So it's the second week of the trial today. How do you think it's going? Uh, well, the trial as a whole has, I think, exceeded my expectations in terms of the fantastic publicity we've had out of it. Uh, I, it's hard to stress too much the fact that everything the public's heard up until today has been the prosecution case. It's been the, the hand-picked uh, pieces which sound the worst if the worst possible gloss is put on them and taken out of context and so on. Uh, but nevertheless, we've had a fantastic response uh, in terms of you know, how people have perceived the media. And some elements of the media really have been quite fair. So it's a bit of a surprise that, but it's gone very well in that regard. Uh, of course, from now on, it's our turn. What we've got for the next few days is uh, Mark and myself actually in the witness box giving our account of things, explaining things our way, and particularly uh, giving the background to the things we said in speeches, why these things were true, the kind of things that have been happening. So it's been a good trial so far, and I think it's about to get better. And what actually happened today? Well, today was we've had several quite long breaks for legal arguments. Uh, these are things which aren't any business of the jury, and the jury is sent out while we do these. Uh, so this is just between the lawyers. Uh, and uh, these remain under reporting restrictions, quite properly so. Uh, so it could prejudice one side or the other. So I can't tell you anything about those. They've been quite interesting. Uh, they'll come out later on, you know, once the trial's over, we'll talk about them and some of the things there are of particular interest to people you know, in this country or abroad, to interest in the case in, the, in general. So there's been those. Then we had the last 10 minutes, I suppose, of the prosecution case, which is just... Uh, summing up, in effect, what they've done before. Uh, and they, they read out the list of agreed, uh, agreed facts. So, for instance, we agree with the, the prosecution and the defence between us, uh, agree that uh, the speeches were made and that they were filmed, that the films are an accurate record of the speeches. Uh, we uh, agree when the programme went out. Uh, and, interestingly, there's um, several point, points where the prosecution in agree with us uh, sorry agree with us uh, we've said that there's no evidence at all of any kind of disorder at or particularly important after these meetings uh, and one of the things uh, from the unused documents we've had from them the prosecution went out to find was uh, they asked all the police in each of the areas where these meetings were have you any evidence that uh, there's that these me meetings have caused trouble uh, and of course they haven't uh, and one of the agreed facts from the prosecution is that yep there was there were no problems after these meetings, which of course we knew and is what we'd expect. Uh, unless the far left are there to cause problems after a meeting, there's never any problems in terms of, say, racial hatred, because the whole purpose of these meetings is to bring people who are concerned about what's going on, on in this country, sometimes angry about what's going on in this country, and give them an explanation for how it's not the immigrants' fault, it's not the asylum seekers' fault, it's the politicians or the media who cover things up, it's the police who won't act when white people are the victims. Those are people, the people we must blame. And the only way to deal with those problems of the uh, uh, a corrupt and anti-white establishment is to change the establishment. So uh, we're getting people at these meetings to say that the what we need is political action, so, of course, there's going to be no hatred. That's come across very strongly today after the prosecution finished their case. Uh, Mark Collett was then uh, in the witness box uh, and was taken through his speeches by, the, by his barrister, his main defence barrister. Uh, and uh, that came out very clearly indeed, uh, that uh, all his speeches, there's this strong political element to them. And he, he said you know, quite openly, these, politics is, in, for most people, an innately boring subject. Unless you have a speech which is lively... Uh, which is talking about the issues which affect real people in their own areas, which is talking at their level, not down in the gutter or uh, up with a House, a House of Commons debate. Unless you're doing these things, your audience isn't interested. Uh, they'll think, oh, this politics business isn't for me, yeah, and they'll remain angry and go and do something stupid and won't come and help us. And Mark's got that across very well, I think, today. Um, we can't... Uh, Mark can't himself make any comments at all until he's out of the witness box. Uh, but I think we've seen already from some of the coverage that's come out that some of the points he's made uh, have been very telling. Do you find it strange to be in the dock, effectively, just for telling the truth? Yes, it's, it struck me when Mark first got in the witness box today, because he's the first one of us in there, uh, and he puts his hand on the Bible and swears to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And it struck me as, in a way, absurd that he's having to swear that, when the prosecution and the law of the land says that the truth is no defence. It is strange. 
uh, the the great men in the great legal cases who created the English common law legal system, uh, either in this country going right back to medieval times, or where it was then picked up uh, and probably taken in some ways to its highest point in terms of freedom of speech in the United States. Uh, the uh, the people who created that wonderful system would, I think, be absolutely appalled by the idea that truth is no defence. It's it's an evil. It's a wicked thing. It really is. But there we are. We've got it. Uh, we are at least, it's accepted that even though the truth is no defence, it is relevant to showing our frame of mind and that by showing that all we've done is tell the truth, uh, that's very strong evidence for the jury really to take that um, we're acting with good motives. We're not out to cause trouble. We're telling the truth because we see real problems affecting real people, and the only way to get these problems addressed is at least to start talking about them and get them out into the open. What do you think of the media coverage so far, and is this what you expected? Did Well, as I said earlier, the trial coverage, I think, has been very, very positive, particularly because what was in the papers and on TV last week was the, the prosecution's best shots against us. Uh, from what I hear already of today's coverage, um, Sky TV and so on and others uh, have seemed to have covered what Mark said really pretty fairly. They've again had him saying, we don't hate anybody, we don't hate asylum seekers. Uh, the only people that we hate, that we're opposed to, are the politicians who've created this mess, the media who tell lies about it, the police who won't take action when white people are victims. Uh, and that's come across very well. Uh, I hear he's been quoted... Obviously, the, the point about his reference to asylum seekers as cockroaches came up yet again. Uh, and uh, he actually explained how that arose as an, um, an in-joke with people at the meeting, because someone had just called him a cockroach. It was in his head. Uh, but um, as he said, it's no worse a phrase than what um, papers like The Sun and The Express at this time were talking about asylum se seekers. You know, they were sponges, they were parasites. Uh, there was actually an editor down in uh, Kent who referred to them as human excrement. Now, compared with that, cockroach is really, is really very mild. So it's not a polite phrase, Mark acknowledged that, uh, but it's nothing which is going to incite hatred or was intended to. Uh, but the fact that the press of, um, well, so far this evening, covered that, covered the explanation and pointed out, yeah, it's nothing worse than what's said in the, other, in the papers quite often. Uh, I think that's a very positive sign. Um, what we'll get out of them for the rest of the week, I don't know. But uh, we had... Uh, to, I think two at one stage live satellite links outside waiting to go out. So they're treating this very seriously as quite a big case. Uh, and I think that um, with the, the rest of Mark's case tomorrow, there will be some fair bit more coverage. And I certainly hope that when we get onto my uh, evidence, uh, some of this, uh, when we're talking about the things I said and why we said them, uh, I think some of it could be very powerful indeed. Uh, and, well, I certainly hope that the media will cover it. On present form, some of it's going to get out in the public domain. I think by the time it's over, that um, whatever the verdict, the vast majority of the politically aware, politically conscious British public are going to know that we've been in court for telling the truth. We've told nothing that we've said nothing that they don't already say and think, uh, and that we're being persecuted for that. Uh, and that's a position which politically I'm very comfortable with. Right, thanks. Nick Griffin, thank you very much.